Hey guys, my name's Jason, and this is part seven of a series where we go to different retail locations and look at Overland gear that you can find in your local retailer. This video is gonna be REI, which is a dedicated camping store. Now it's not difficult to find Overland items at REI. However, finding the budget conscious items was actually pretty difficult. So if you like this kind of content and you wanna see more, you can leave me a comment below, like this video, share it with your friends, anything to help out the algorithm so I can keep making these. So because I filmed this right after a sales holiday, it's likely that a lot of the stuff just wasn't in the store. So because of that, a few of these will be online, but most of these will be in store. That being said, guys, let's go ahead and just get started with the video. This REI Co-op brand Groundbreaker 2 tent could be a great tent for one person or two smaller people. REI branded items are a good way to save money while shopping at REI. And actually, they're usually made by one of the bigger brands and just repackaged as an REI branded item. So they had a lot of REI brand tents there, but most of them were very expensive and very big tents. I guess they just don't keep a big stock of the cheap stuff in store. This is a two-person tent, but in my experience, like I've said before, a two-person tent usually fits one person a little bit better, and three-person tents are usually best for two, and so on, so on. Kelty brand is one of those brands that I just really like. This Kelty Discovery Base Camp 4 is a great option for three or four people who want to save a little bit of money. This is shaped in a more traditional tent style and is decently heavy, so by no means is this a backpacking tent. This is best suited for car camping or overlanding. They also make a six-person version as well. Like I said before, the six-person version is likely going to be best for five people or more if you have, you know, smaller people or children. Another great brand that I really, really like and always recommend is Coleman. So Coleman makes this great Sky Dome Darkroom 4. I've talked about this in a lot of my videos in this series, and the Darkroom 4 is a four-person tent. And the biggest selling point for me is the Darkroom technology. So that is going to eliminate up to 90% of light from getting in the tent. If you want to sleep past the sunrise in the morning, then uh, this is a really great one for you. This one is also really ruggedly designed and withstand winds of up to 35 miles per hour. So it's really hard to say that any rooftop tent is going to be in the budget category. But when you consider a new GFC or iCamper can cost up to $4,100, and most rooftop tents cost around three to four grand. Then this Tapui Explorer Air 2 coming in at $1,500 is a pretty good option. They used to sell the Kukumin 3 person tent, but recently stopped carrying it for some reason. Now the Kukumin 3 was actually my first rooftop tent. Um, I really liked that one a lot, but it was sort of a brick and um, I needed something a little bit more lower profile, which is why I ended up switching to the GFC. Only downside of these is that they are basically bricks on top of your vehicle. so. You know, you may not be able to fit into a lot of places. Now that was actually what I ran into, which is why I switched to the hard shell rooftop tents. Now sort of breaking my rule that I said earlier, this is a two person tent and can actually fit two people inside. It'll just be a little bit tight. Now if you have a truck and want something sort of in between a ground tent and a rooftop tent, then this right line gear truck might be a good option for you. I actually stopped by their booth at the Outdoor Retailer Expo. They're actually owned by the same company that owns CVT, Climate, and I believe one other company. It gives you the ability to be off the ground just like a rooftop tent, but it comes in with a price tag of really just like a higher end ground tent. They make tons of these in different sizes, so you do have to make sure that this fits with your specific truck. It is likely that they make one for your truck, you just need to check out the list. Now, I always recommend these Eno hammocks. I used to camp strictly with the Eno double nest when I was younger and, you know, sort of a bit more broke. Now, I still bring these with me when I camp, but this is more for leisure, just hanging out around the campsite. I don't really camp in these anymore now that I have a rooftop tent, but they're still perfectly fine for camping as long as you get the double nest. Most people could camp in the single nest, but it's just better to have the sides and the wall a little bit higher. The single nest doesn't really give you any room to kind of move around, so I just prefer the double nest personally. So if you're looking for a pretty good sleeping bag that'll be good for at least the spring, summer, and fall where I live, and possibly fall, winter, and spring in warmer areas, this Coleman Brazos 30 degree is probably right for you. Cohen makes a decent enough product for the budget-minded person and is a brand that I've never really had a problem with ever. 
This bag is rated to a comfort level of 30 degrees, but actually has a survivability rating of 20 degrees, meaning they're actually underselling it with the name. So the bag length should fit someone up to 6'2 and a half, so you might have to look elsewhere if you're taller. Another great bag in this range is the Kelty Cantina 30. This one is a little bit more, but Kelty makes a really quality product, and this one is really no exception. This one is also rated to 30 degrees, but has no distinction as to whether that is the survivability rating or the comfort rating. So just to be safe, we'll have to treat that as the survivability rating. This one states that it's made for people up to six foot tall. So if you're taller, again, you know, look elsewhere. This Coleman Compact 20 is a little bit better for colder weather. My main sleeping bag is actually a 20 degree and I usually use it for about 30 degrees and up. Any colder than that, I usually go to my negative 30 bag and just vent it if it's a little bit warmer. This sleeping bag has a Coleman Colterm Max Fill, which should be able to get you more warmth without as much weight. The zippers in this bag are the Ziplo zippers that should prevent snags, but I've personally not had an issue with that on any of my sleeping bags. I'm usually just careful opening and closing my bags. Now this one's only rated for people up to 5'11", so you know, you get the drill. If you're taller, look elsewhere. As I always recommend in every one of these videos, grab yourself one of these per person that you have with you and just keep them with you all the time. These aren't super expensive and they could save your life in a really bad situation. I also saw this emergency blanket bivy that was similar to the one I talked about in the Cabela's video, but it's actually like a third of the price of that one. So I actually might try one of these out in another video. Comment below if you want to see that. So the cheapest one I could find for the sleeping pads was this Nemo switchback sleeping pad. So the biggest drawback for me on this one is that it isn't inflatable. So it's not very thick in the sense of sleeping on it, but it's still fairly thick when it comes to packing. Although this one didn't actually look too bad in terms of packing space taken up, but it's still not for me as I really want to get a lot more comfort out of a mattress as I can. This is probably good if you're a backpacker, it's pretty lightweight, but if you're in a rooftop tent or a ground tent and you're car camping, then just go for an inflatable one, you know, something with a higher R value. So this Kelty Mistral SI sleeping pad is a bit better with an R value of 4.7. This one actually is inflatable and adds an extra 1.5 inches of padding to your sleeping setup. So this sleeping pad is actually mummy shaped, so it's better for a mummy style sleeping bag, which personally just really aren't for me. A little too restricting in the legs. I just don't like those kind of sleeping bags. So the Sea to Summit Camp self-inflating sleeping pad is actually a rectangular shape, so a normal non-mummy sleeping bag will fit better. This one has a decent R value as well with an R value of 4.2. If I was picking any of these pads from this list, I would go with this one, although this is about two times the price as the last one. So Sea to Summit I actually checked out at the outdoor retailer and I really like their stuff so I will be trying out some of their products in the coming videos. So I used to use a camp pillow that packed down pretty tightly but I have more room now so I usually just bring a normal pillow. So that being said this REI co-op trail break foam pillow is super cheap though so if you feel like you want to go with one I'd go with this one. It packs down smaller than a normal pillow so if space is an issue for you these will be great. So maybe you think $19 is a lot of money for these, but um, you know, just for comparison, this Nemo Philo King camping pillow is almost $70. That's not even close to the most expensive one at REI. So there actually were a lot of really expensive camping chairs here. It's sort of a running theme with a lot of REI stuff, but I was able to find a few decent chairs that I like. The REI brand Camp X chair was actually not a bad deal. This one is again the REI brand, so you usually expect they're pretty solid and lower in price. It packed down to about what you'd expect a chair of this size to pack down to. It's not too big, but it's not so small that they had to raise the price to uh, you know, design it a little bit better. For some reason, this chair has a see-through mesh on the bottom, which I could see it not holding up so well if an ember from the fire landed on it, but really what chair would? So this one actually has an X webbing that goes through and goes right through the see-through mesh and it helps distribute the weight better. When I sat on it, I did notice a little bit of difference in the chair and it felt a lot more like a nicer expensive chair. The Mountain Summit Gear Anytime Chair was about as cheap as REI gets for chairs. This was a much lower end option and it felt just like any other chair in this price range did. So there was nothing special about it. It was a chair and it works as a chair. Not super comfy, but not at all uncomfortable. The only real downside I saw to this one is that when I tried to open it, the fabric would get caught in the frame a little bit. It wasn't super annoying, but um, 
you know, it, it, it might even work itself out over some time. So the last one is the REI Co-op Camp Low Chair. This blue one was $49, but online I found this orange one at only $29. I'm not a fan of the low chairs, but if you are, then this could be the right one for you. It was very simplistic and felt a little bit more to me like a beach chair than a camping chair. Plenty comfortable to sit on, and I could see myself not minding how low it was. There was a bit of a design issue, and I'm not sure would actually be a problem, but I could see this little track here that sticks out a bit getting bent if something heavy was resting on it. This isn't something that I've seen or heard happening. This is just a guess based on previous things I've owned that have metal parts sticking out. As far as tables go, this Coleman compact roll top aluminum table would probably be perfectly fine for most people. This one is technically no longer available through them, but I liked my old one so much that I still definitely recommend it. So in the links below, I will actually just include an Amazon link instead of the REI one. I actually had this one for a while and it was perfectly fine for most of my needs. However, due to the reflective top, it was tough for filming purposes, so I upgraded to a black one that was a little bit wider. For most people, this table will work perfectly fine. If you have a large grill, maybe check out the specs and see if this is right for you. This REI Co-op Camp Roll Table is essentially a beefed up version of the table that I had from Coleman. The frame on this one is a lot more substantial and much thicker than the Coleman one. The REI version is much more expensive, but if you want to beef your table and don't mind paying a little bit extra, then this should work perfectly fine for you. So the next one is a double sized one, just like the one I use now. The Mountain Summit Gear Heavy Duty Roll Top Table in a medium size is a step up from the Coleman or REI tables in terms of size. It's very similar in design with the roll top, but it's much beefier and it's also a lot larger. There's also a Mountain Summit Gear heavy duty roll top table in a large size as well. This one is the most similar to my current table, except for a lot better made. I have some off-brand Amazon one, but I think I may either go this route or the King Camp table route. So the first one we're gonna talk about is this Tika 300 lumen headlamp. This is the exact same headlamp that I actually have now. I've had mine for years and I really love it. It's actually held up really great considering how cheap it is. So 300 lumens is a pretty good level and this one has three different light modes from low to high. So the new one can actually work with this rechargeable core but mine's a little bit older so it will only work with batteries. My biggest complaint about mine is that it's battery powered and I can't recharge it but upgrading to a new one would pretty much make mine absolutely perfect. So they also have another one that is a 250 lumen one. This one is also battery powered, but it can be run from the Petzl rechargeable core as well. If you want to save a little money and only lose 50 lumen, this is a great option. Although it's only a $10 difference, so it's really up to you. So there's also these black diamond lights that are also rechargeable. The 350 lumen is the most powerful headlight on this list, but by far it is the most expensive. You could go for the much cheaper non-rechargeable one that only takes three AAA batteries. In my opinion, the rechargeable lights are almost always the way to go. In my opinion, I would just always recommend if there is a rechargeable option, go for that one, but I camp quite a bit. So I go through those batteries every few months. So they also have the same solar string lights that I have. I like these a lot, but they don't have the longest runtime ever. So these are just solar lights that I have kind of usually just draped over my tent for ambient light, but it's not really a good substitute for actual lighting. So they also have the Lucy solar lights like most places I've been to in this series. So if you don't already know, these lights are great, they're solar powered, and they can pack down really small. Great for setting on your dash as you drive to your destination, and then you have a fully charged light when you get to camp. These are great for ambient light, or can be used inside the tent with 75 watts. The light isn't super overpowering. When it comes to flashlights, these coast lights are a really solid deal. For only $30, you get a 650 lumen light, which is really more than enough to see most of what you need to see around camp. The downside is that it takes batteries, but when it comes to budget items, that's pretty much par for the course. It has three modes, low, medium, and high. And also with the twist focus, you can have either a wide flood beam or a narrow long distance beam. If you're just looking for a cheap but reliable flashlight, this Coast G22 light is probably your best bet. 100 lumen light, which is probably fine for most activities around camp, but certainly won't throw a ton of light out. This one uses AAA batteries and the same twist focus as the last one. 
So we're gonna start off here with the two-way radios. For some reason, even though these were fairly cheap, they were behind a cage. They're very popular, so you'll see them at a ton of retail locations. These are just some budget FRS radios that should be fine for most trail communications. Now I have a Midland radio. It is a GMRS, not an FRS, but for most people, FRS is probably gonna be fine. These aren't super fancy, but they will get the job done. So these next ones are actually the same ones that I keep inside my vehicle. These have both FRS and GMRS capabilities, so you have a ton more options of devices that you can communicate with. So I've had these for a few years and I've been very happy with them. The only complaint I have is that one of my radios drains a little bit faster than the other radio, but it's usually fine if I just make sure that it's fully charged before I leave. So as far as power banks go, I usually tend to stick with the EcoFlow products, only occasionally straying if I've done the research and the other product checks out. So I have the Delta Max, which is a more powerful version of the one here. This is the Delta Mini that has about 800 watts compared to my Delta Max, which has 2000 watt hours of solar energy. There's also the EcoFlow River, which is one that I see a lot more often. So the River Standard comes in at 350 and that's 210 watts. The River Pro is $650 at 72 watt hours. So REI has a ton of stoves, but on the budget option, it's kind of hard to come by. The first one I was able to find was this Eureka Ignite. There was a display model, but they must have sold out because I could only really find them online. So the stove is a two burner, 10,000 BTU per burner unit that is actually pretty compact. It's a pretty middle of the road propane stove, but compared to everything else there, it was pretty good for the money. It has a decent enough runtime, and with two burners, you should be able to get most of your cooking done in that time. For just a bit more money, you can get this GSI Selkirk camp stove. GSI is a really well-trusted brand that makes a lot of quality budget and non-budget camping supplies. So this stove claims that it can bring water to a boil within two minutes and 13 seconds. So the next one is another Eureka product, but this time it is a butane unit. The Eureka SPRK Plus, which I believe is just pronounced Spark, it is an 11,500 BTU unit stove, which is a lot higher than the other two, but is only a single burner. I haven't always had the best luck with butane stoves, but there are a ton of budget options for butane. I have a lot of other propane products, so for me, I think that I would just rather go with the GSI Spark because if I already have propane, I might as well just bring only propane with me. So I also wanted to include these little fast burning stoves. So just for me, I really wouldn't use these for cooking at camp. You can do that, but I would use these more for stuff like coffee. I have this MSR pocket rocket in my drawer system now at all times, and it's great for cooking coffee or just making an MRE in a pinch. 8200 BTU and can boil water in only three and a half minutes. The benefit to this is that if you already have another stove and you just want a separate stove, these are super, super compact. I like this GSI Glacier Camp stove because while it's not necessarily as compact as the MSR or the jet boil, that's not really a big issue when it comes to overlanding. This stove boasts an 11,000 BTU in a very tiny package. So the last one is this Soto Amicus all-in-one stove that basically gives you a stove and a pot to cook in all together. Truth be told, I really didn't know much about this one until I researched it, but people online seem to really like it. It's a budget stove that puts out 11,000 BTU. So if you're new to camping, then you get basically a way to cook as well as storage for a canister and other utensils. So to kick this category off, I'm gonna recommend these Ucko or Uko Sporks. I always recommend these in all of my videos. They're really great. They do a great job as a fork and as a spoon and a decent job as a butter knife as well. All in one and super cheap. From the exact same company, we have this $29 mess kit that sits together really nicely and stays together with a silicone tether. So the five piece kit includes one bowl or container, one lid or plate, and also one switch spork so it's a fork, spoon, and knife. This is essentially everything you'd need for utensils at your dinner for only $30. So this Stanley Adventure prep and eat nine piece set wouldn't be something I purchase now as I have nicer things, but if you're just starting off and don't want to spend a ton of money, then this nine piece frying pan set might be for you. The set includes a frying pan, a lid, cutting board, spatula, trivet, two plates, and two sporks. Pretty much everything you need from camp, all the way from cooking to eating. This knife set from GSI is the same knife I talked about in my Cabela's video, and I'll say the same thing I said there. This knife set could be really great for someone who doesn't already have a cutting board and a knife. The all-in-one kit is great for travel, but you could just as easily get a decent knives and a compact cutting board. 
That being said, it is a GSI, so if you want to go that route, rest assured, no, it's going to hold up. So this kettle set is something that's been really catching my eye lately. I really like the idea of having a dedicated tea or coffee kettle at camp. Not only that, but you get an insulated mug with a lid, a bowl, a spork, or a foon, as they call it. And all of these items nest cleanly inside of a mesh stuff sack. I wouldn't necessarily call this one a necessity, but it could be great for those of you that like something dedicated for the tea or coffee at camp. So they also have this sink here. I never thought I would need one, but I got one recently to wash vegetables and fruit at camp, and it actually makes a huge difference. This one here is an 8 liter, and I think it's not a bad price. Wouldn't consider it a necessity, but it would be really great to have. So this next one isn't necessarily a budget item, but compared to other hot water showers, it, it kind of is. Well, actually, you'll see these in the future. I'll, I'll be talking a little bit more about these in another video. So they also had the Lodge cast iron, which I always recommend, but they didn't have any in stock. So even though I really like the Stanley products, I think this one is the way to go. This is the AeroPress. For $40, you can get a little portable French press that comes with its own proprietary filters. These filters only cost about $6 for a 350 pack, so it's not like they are price gouging you there. This small portable coffee press is a great compact and cheap way to make coffee while out in the backcountry. If you're more of a pour over person, then you can just bring some reusable filters like I do and just pour some boiling water over them. Although I actually am about to try a new coffee product that's basically coffee in a tea bag and it's super affordable. So I normally recommend some sort of folding shovel, but I couldn't really find one of those there. I did find this one there for only a little bit more than the folding shovel. This one also comes with a few extras like a fire starting tool, a storage handle with a flint fire starter. It had some cord. I'm not sure if that's paracord, probably not a cord cutter and a sheath. All in all, you get a lot more for not a lot of money. So if you don't need all of that, you can just get a small folding shovel and you should be fine. For that, I'll just link one from Amazon below. So I always recommend getting yourself a folding saw for cutting down to branches or just cutting small branches around the campsite. This Silky F180 folding handsaw is actually not a bad deal. I usually don't talk much about the Silky products because their stuff is top of the line and the prices usually reflect that. But this one is actually quite affordable. So the blade and the handle measure 16.14 inches long when fully extended. It is recommended for cutting wood 3.6 inches in diameter or less. So surprisingly another Silky product on this list, the Silky Pocket Boy curved 130 millimeter folding saw with case. It's a little bit smaller and a little more compact than the 180. So if you're tight on space, this one would be the way to go. So it's only a little bit more money, but if you need the space, then it's worth just that little bit more. This one is also made with premium Japanese steel, which is a huge bonus in terms of lightness, as Japanese steel contains higher carbon, making it lighter while also being stronger. So they do have a Leatherman rebar, which is my go-to multi-tool. So I really love this thing, and it lives on my Desert Does It panel in the front all the time when I go camping. However, this thing is $80, so if you really want a cheaper option, you could go for this Leatherman Bond, which is about $60. So this one actually features needle nose pliers, regular pliers, hard wire cutters, a knife, wood and metal file, all with thread loops, a can opener, a bottle opener, wire stripper, and a ruler. So if you want to go even cheaper, this Gerber Armbar Drive Multi-Tool could work out for you. The big thing that's missing for me is a set of pliers, but other than that, this one's got most of the stuff you'd need. An awl, a pry bar, bottle opener, hammer, scissors, and a 2.5 inch extension driver with a double-sided bit. So if you need a decent pocket knife, you can go for this Gerber Paraframe 2 serrated knife. So Gerber isn't necessarily what it used to be. It can be a hit or miss, but this one seems to be an all right option to go with. It features a 3.4 inch blade, as well as a frame lock and a pocket clip. <laughs> 